Hey there, this one is a really quick video. I'm going to show you how to do remote control of your Logitech ColabOS device using the Sync Portal. Right, so if I transition over to the Sync Portal, this is my Sync Portal. I'm going to show you how to go into a device. So in this case, it's a rally bar huddle. I'm just going to click on the huddle. I don't have a tap IP or scheduler plugged into this just now. So I'm just going to show you actually on the rally bar huddle. And then here you've got this start remote UI se uh, access session button. So what this will actually do is open up the local network access. So basically the web UI onto the device itself. You put in the credentials and then log in. And now I've got this, uh, the ability to actually start a remote access session. So one thing I should mention is remote access is dependent on the select license. If you don't know what the select license is, basically it is an upgrade or a supercharge for everything to do with supporting your Logitech hardware. So it gives you a better SLA in terms of uh, the support. So you go directly into a second and third line team. Uh, you log your, your tickets against a, a portal that has your devices actually in it. Uh, gives you next business day advanced replacement. Um, uh, gives you analytics. But it also gives you this remote control. I don't have a select license actually in my own personal tenant, but I do have Logitech devices, as you can see. But what you can do to try this out, if you think this is going to be a benefit to your organization and actually doing remote control, is you can start a 30-day trial. So that's what I'm going to do, actually start a 30-day trial on uh, this feature, just this feature, not select, uh, against the rally bar huddle. So this is the rally bar huddle that's actually behind me. And I'm actually remote controlling it. One thing that you should also know is that if I did have multiple displays plugged in, um, obviously the Rattlebar Huddle only has the capability of one display, but if I had a TapCat 5 plugged in, uh, that counts as an additional display. If I used a display link adapter, for instance, to, to enable a second monitor uh, actually connected to the Huddle, uh, what I can do is actually toggle between them. So this only gives me the front of room display. Again, I don't have uh, anything else actually plugged into this device. I've only got the single display and then using the mouse to kind of mimic that um, kind of hands-on approach to the actual device. So now that I'm actually connected to the device, I've got a couple of options for control. Obviously, I've got my mouse that I'm actually connected to uh, this PC with. Uh, and then the, you can see the cursor there. If I go and click on the actual window itself, if I wanted to start a Meet Now, I could do that. There you go. It's starting a Meet Now. The video or the actual bar itself is behind the green screen that's behind me. And then here I can get out all the, uh, the settings. You can't quite see the window. I've actually not uh, made it large enough for you to see. But anything I can do from the device itself, I can actually do remotely. I'm just using the mouse as kind of a remote finger to touch the device. The other thing I can do is I can go into more. And then from here, I can go into the settings. And then go into device settings. And then from here, I can actually get at all of the Collab OS settings, but more crucially, and I'll show you that in a second once I'm actually logged in. So here I can get at all the Collab OS settings, but one thing um, that you'll know that if you do manage MTR on Android devices, one important critical thing that you can't actually get access to from the Teams Admin Center or the Pro Portal is the Teams Admin Settings. So in here, if I go into System, and then go into Teams Admin Settings, this gives me access to all of the Teams Admin Settings. So right now, this is the only way to actually one-to-one -one live manage all of these actual features uh, and things themselves. So from here, I can, I can scroll up and down. I can tick boxes and that sort of thing. I can go into Meetings and enable things like, you know, extend room reservations or require passcode for meetings. Um, I can configure my front row layout. I can show the chat. Um, I can also enable and disable third-party meetings. Um, I can even go into device settings and then room camera and actually change the framing mode. So 
Uh, by default, I can choose, you know, sort of composite or room view or active speaker. And of course, I get that preview of the room camera behind there. I can also set the default room camera as maybe a second camera that's plugged into there if I wanted to. If I expand that down, if I had a, th a second camera plugged into there, I can actually enable that as the main sort of primary room camera. And then as a user, I can toggle back and forth between the two once I'm actually in a meeting. My point is anything you can do from the device, you can do uh, remotely using the remote UI access. The other thing you can see is this green halo around the device, a remote UI access. This isn't just for my benefit, actually, as a remote participant. If you look at the device itself, it actually does have this green halo on the screen. It means that it's, that it's uh, innately ob obvious that you are actually or remote controlling the device. It means you can't stealthily go and actually eavesdrop on a meeting that's going on in your organization. Um, the participants in the room, hopefully they'll notice the big green halo and the remote UI access session in progress on the front room display. And if you've got a TapCat 5 or, or, or a Tap IP uh, connected, that green halo will be around all of the displays that are actually connected to this device. It means it should be um, exceedingly obvious that a remote access session is actually in progress. And then the last point basically is to, to mention that uh, remote UI access is only possible over local network access. Logitech isn't actually controlling the device from the sync portal itself. As you saw, when I actually launched the, uh, uh, the session from the sync portal, it actually opened up an LNA session. I happen to be on the same LAN as the device itself now. If I wanted to do this uh, from a remote location, maybe the beat or something, uh, maybe I'm working from home and I do want to get remote control of this device, I need to be able to access LNA. That means I'll need a VPN or some, some other routable access onto the corporate LAN to actually get at the settings on the device and obviously get at remote UI access. Uh, and then last uh, thing to mention is as of the Collab OS update 1.12, uh, Logitech has actually disabled LNA by default. You can actually go in and set that LNA, but what you need to do is change the password. By default, as soon as you enable LNA, it actually sets a password, a default password, as the last six digits of the serial number. If you Google it, you'll find that as an answer. And that, of course, becomes a security risk because everybody, as long as you know the serial number of the device itself, it means you can potentially open up LNA on the device uh, and actually authenticate. So what Logitech is doing is disabling it by default and then when you enable it, it does enable with the default credentials. But after 48 hours, what they'll do is if you haven't reset that password to something unique, as in not the last six digits of the serial number, they'll disable uh, LNA for you uh, as, as a security precaution. So what you, you need to actually enable LNA. You need to set a unique password. And then uh, LNA will remain enabled. And then if you do have select, and I you know, encourage you to look at select if you haven't looked at it already, then you can actually just start this um, uh, remote access session. Um, if you don't have select just yet, and you're, you're in the process of potentially finding out more information, then you can, as I showed you, you can get a 30 day trial to get access specifically to the remote UI access feature. Doesn't give you access to all the other select features, but if you speak to Logitech, um, they'll actually be able to enable a select trial for you as well to give you um, a little trial or taster of all the other benefits of select. Right, and so once you're done remote uh, controlling your system, you just need to press stop session. That will actually stop this session and leave you in LNA to actually go in and configure anything else that you want to configure. Right, and that's it. That's the entire feature. Hopefully this quick video has given you some en enlightenment in, into this feature. If you if this kind of stuff is up your street, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I definitely appreciate uh, your support. I've got a lot more videos coming this week, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.